Man, I wish I had samples of dirt from Japan. Actual samples I could test in my scintillator. I wonder if I could just make one appear in my hand right now. <gasps> well, look at that. It appeared. A sample straight from Japan. Let's see. Oh, hello. This is Tom from anti-proton.com and today I have some interesting um, news for you about testing for radiation in Japan. I just received an entire set of samples from a friend of mine who lives in Japan and I'm testing them using gamma spectrography as well as some other techniques depending on what type of sample it is and I'm going to be sharing the results with you uh, one sample at a time. Let me first show you some of the samples to give you an idea of what I received. I have things like this air filter. By the way, look at this. They definitely from Japan. They came in Hello Kitty bags. That's funny. Well, it is Japan, so... Anyhow, I received an air filter from an apartment that was used during the middle of the uh, Fukushima crisis. A can of canned coffee. Never heard of such a thing, but Apparently it exists. We shall see. <clears throat> Water from Saga City in Saga Prefecture. And uh, the reason that there's only a little bit of the water left is because the majority of the water is currently inside of uh, my uh, uh, scintillator right this moment. It's cooking off in there, developing a spectrum. The problem is that uh, for some of these samples right here, I have to run them for as much as 8 to 10 hours to get a good read. But that's not true for all of the samples. Some of them were pretty hot. Each one of them, oops, they have this, the original packing tape on them. Each one of them came in a little film canister, and it was uniquely labeled, every single one of them, with this sheet of paper indicating what they are. <coughs> and by far, the, the best sample I've received so far is this one, sample A. Sample A registers about 300, I think it was 300 counts a minute off the top of my head. I'll have to take a look at it. Let's see, what was sample A? 306 counts per minute is this little guy right here. Let me cut my uh, Geiger counter on. Open up the beta shield and see what I get. Obviously the Pancake Geiger Mueller 2 gets 300, not the, um, not the old CDV 700. My CDV 700 is showing, let's see what the reading is. Uh, looks like somewhere right around 100. Let me move it so you can see. This isn't going to be a very long video, by the way. Several people have now suggested that I should make my video shorter, and so I will. Hopefully you can see that, and if you can't, you can't. But this should be reading nicely. Does it work? Yeah, I think it's working. Anyway, so... You get about 300 um, counts per minute. Uh, let me put this down here. Still haven't come up with a good name for my Geiger counter yet, by the way. I'm working on that. And <clears throat> there are so many different samples here to test. I mean, lots of them. Let me show you an example of the sort of thing I'm doing with my testing. Here is a picture of a... Uh, let's see, what am I going to show you here? Here is a picture of my first uh, 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 soil test. My first soil test, and that was with sample A, discovered cesium-134 and cesium-137 for sure. I have very clear photo peaks on them, and I compared them with samples of actual cesium-137 that I have currently in stock here. Um, I also can infer strontium-90, but I'll explain in a minute how that is. Here's, here's, an, here's the spectrum. And as you can see from the spectrum, there's a, at the bottom of it, there's a lot of kind of wavy, ripply, kind of garbagey looking stuff. I don't know how to put it exactly. I like to call it static. Basically put, it's not as clean as it could be. And I find if I take my actual cesium-137 sample, for example, and put it in my scintillator, I get a very beautiful, clean set of peaks. But if I drop a strontium-90 sample, which I also own, inside of the scintillator with the cesium-137, instead of getting that nice beautiful set of peaks, I still get the peaks, 
but I get this garbagey crap all over the place. And the reason I'm getting it most likely is the beta energy coming from the strontium 90 is impacting the it's impacting the the, 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 the tube itself from the scintillator. It's hitting the crystal. It's hitting all sorts of stuff. And it's causing a lot of uh, Brumstrahl lung radiation as well as a lot of other things. Basically, put a beta hits a piece of metal, slows down and curves, and then produces a secondary X-ray or gamma ray. And as a result of that, I can say for sure there's something else being detected inside of this sample. I know because it's causing that effect in the bottom of my scintillator, or on um, scintillator, the bottom of the graph from the scintillator. I can't say what it is. I'm going to make the reasonable assumption, based on no direct fact, that strontium-90 is probably at play. And the reason I make this is because strontium-90 and cesium-137 very much go hand in hand with a uh, uh, nuclear uh, uh, release of, uh, of radiation such as uh, Chernobyl, Fukushima, for example. So this is well documented, it's well known. It was even known back in the 50s. I mean, huge amounts of uh, uh, time and effort were put in training people what to do with cesium-137 and, of course, strontium-90. But you can't detect strontium-90 directly with gamma spectrography, so, of course, that's why things like this Geiger counter here are supposed to be calibrated with cesium-137 because that's something you can detect. And the energy that cesium-137 imparts and the energy that strontium-90 imparts are very similar energies. So typically I'd like to, con I'd like to think that, that it's in incredibly possible or if not very likely that this contains uh, strontium-90 as well. Though that, that cannot be stated for sure, that is an inference. But I, know, I do know that it contains cesium-137 and cesium-134. It's quite, quite clear. Did I see anything else? Let me look at my own little um, thing here. Did I see something else? No. I have a beautiful Compton edge and the backscatter. It's a whole nine yards. Now let me show you another one. I just took this filter here and I ran this filter for an entire eight hours while I was sleeping. And <clears throat> I got back a, some, some surprisingly good data on it. Um, here, let me first show you the graph. You look at the graph, you get an idea from it, and then I'll talk about it. Hold on, here it is. Alright, well, looking at the graph, if you remember from the graph, um, there were three peaks. Well, three major peaks. Three major peaks. There was the 76.28 uh, uh, kilo electron volt peak, and that was probably just x-rays and things uh, banging around inside of my scintillator. That, that's sort of a known effect. It happens on lots of these sorts of scintillators. Every single sample I do gets that exact same peak. Um, I contacted the manufacturer, by the way, too, and they, they agree that that's exactly what that is. However, depending on my, on my calibration, it can sometimes come back in the 80s. I've been working on trying to get a good calibration. It's very difficult when I only have a three-point calibration method to use. But regardless, my second peak I got was at 513.08 kiloelectron volts. That was the one in the middle that was blue. Anyway, that peak, you can't see it very well in this logarithmic view I was showing you. The logarithmic view has channels or, 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 or of energy. Each one of them is equal to a certain number of kiloelectron volts. And then it has counts. And in the logarithmic view, this counts don't, they, they don't go one count, two count, three count, four count, four, five count, they go one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, blah, blah, blah. In other words, it's a curvature. So as you go up higher, it will slow down. So it goes, jumps up really quickly and then slows down. It's called a logarithmic view. Um, if I put that onto a linear view where, where the counts are, are literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way up and down, you could have seen it much more clearly. That peak is 513.08, which is not even one kilo electron volt off of the energy required for uh, a Krypton-85. Why Krypton-85? Well, Krypton-85 is released during events like Fukushima, for example. It, it's gaseous, and it would have got it, it, it would have gotten in the air filter. I mean, being gaseous, it could have gotten in the air filter. I shouldn't say that it would have. That that would suggest that I actually know for a fact that it did, and I do not know for a fact that it did. I only pose this as a possible answer for this particular energy. But I think it's a very possible one. This test was done clearly and correctly this time, unlike that last one I did with the uh, rainwater where it was all impromptu. I carefully planned this one and did it. And if you go to my website, anti-proton.com, I have an entire paper uh, on this particular test. Detailed as every part of the experiment, all explanations of everything are in it. Please go read it and see for yourself. And if you have other conclusions, 
If you don't think that this was Krypton 85, let me know. Propose something different. Please do so in a professional manner if you could, though. The last peak on my list is the big green one, which was an unknown peak at 1,417.95 uh, 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 kiloelectron volts. I don't know what that is. I have no idea what that is. I tried. I couldn't figure it out. The, 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 the width of the peak is 150 plus kiloelectron volts, a big wide one like that. So there's many things that could fit into it. And I don't want to just start speculating, oh, well, it looks like it should be this. I don't know. And if I don't know with a reasonable certainty, I'm not going to make an a assumption about it. I actually don't have a good idea of what it is. Even if you just ask me between you and I, what do I think that it might be? I, I don't actually know. There are a couple random things it could be. There are two more peaks, if you like, at 1949.89 and 2237.06 kilotron volts. But they're very un they're not very well formed at all, and I'm not sure what they are. I'd have to take some additional time to try to derive what they are. The problem is the activity in the sample is so low that it's very difficult to detect anything from it. It took eight hours just to get what you saw. But I have all the data there, so you can look through it all yourself, and you can determine what you think about it. By the way, go to anti-proton.com. It's in the details page, and you can look at all, of this deta all these details and let me know what you think. Also, at some point I want to get into showing you some of my radioactive minerals collection. I just got this nice, beautiful book. Oh, this book's awesome. It's called Radioactive Minerals. There's still a couple of them on, on uh, Amazon, if you like. And it has pictures all the way through it. I think the fact that I'm showing you this from 10 feet away is covered under fair use. Because you can't take one of these images I'm showing you and do anything with it. And this, I guess maybe the CIA would be good enough to zoom in and grab a hold of one, but that's about it. Beautiful rock pictures. Let's you see them all, and then you can take your rocks and you can examine your rocks with the uh, with 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 your with your Geiger counter or a scintillator or whatnot and figure out what's in them. Um, let's see, are we just about done here? I've just recovered from my major cold that I had, so oh my god, that was that was horrible. I have three days off. This is one of them, and um, so I'm going to try to see if I can get to my samples. Let me tell you quickly what the samples are, so you know. The samples are as follows. Soil from a uh, from the backyard of a, of a person's house under a rain spout in Kashiwa uh, City, Chiba Prefecture. Yeah, I know I'm murdering these names. Also, soil from a playground in the same place, Kashiwa uh, City. And I think that this is, um, I believe that this is north of Tokyo off the top of my head. I believe this is north of Tokyo. Uh, then I have two canisters. One is from a house built pre-March 11. That's in uh, Shiga pre uh, Prefecture. So this is soil from before the incident. It was underneath somebody's house. So it's as close to as before one can get without, technically speaking, have taken it before one can get it. Soil from a park in the same exact place. Uh, gravel from the surface of a baseball field in uh, Saga Prefecture near the government offices. Um, dirt from a drainage ditch in Saga City. Uh, two canisters full of a blended tea that the ingredients are suspected of being contaminated. We shall see, of course, if that's true. Uh, the, the filter for AC heater, rainwater collected on 1118, and of course the coffee. So we will test all of these and we will see what we can find from them. And uh, of course all the data will be put out there for you to see. But this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you for liking on my site. Thank you for commenting on my site. Please visit anti-proton.com. YouTube was only originally supposed to be a side project to my webpage. So, you know, whatever. Visit the real one if you like. Um, 